Well, it's been the week of the giant egos of the former Labor Prime Ministers, hasn't it? These guys that just can't stay out of the limelight in dignified retirement. Coming to the fore in the news once again. Paul Keating wins the award for the worst performance of the week. Desperate for relevance and somehow ever the apologist for the Chinese Communist Party, Keating had a meeting with the visiting Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Sydney this week. A move that he must have known played right into the hands of the Chinese government. Keating should never have agreed to that meeting because it embarrassed his own party, the government of Anthony Albanese and Australia itself in a way. Wang Yi and his government were clearly playing games and meddling in our domestic politics, trying to give kudos to those within the Labor Party who support China more than those who don't, and to send that signal to the Labor Party loud and clear. Not nice. Meddling. And very unpleasant of Paul Keating to enable that little game. Wang Yi's visit and official meeting with Penny Wong was supposed to be a step to normalising relations with China after the difficulties we've had in recent years. But it leaves one asking, can we ever normalise relations with a communist regime that just seems to want to exert power over us all the time and play silly games, rather than be an open, transparent, fair and friendly goodwill partner? Meanwhile, the ghost of that other, desperate for attention and relevance, former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd arose in an interview between UK, UK TV cable news channel GB News host and Brexit political leader Nigel, Nigel Farage and Donald Trump that aired exclusively in Australia on Sky News this week. Farage posed a question to Trump about whether he could work with Rudd, given the many horrible things that Rudd has said about him in the past. It's not entirely clear that Trump even knew who Farage was talking about. We've also got China to think about, and our friends at Sky News Australia wanted me to ask you this. The AUKUS deal that's in place on nuclear submarines, America, you know, the UK, Australia, very, very important deal. It's there to try and combat that huge growth, naval growth in China. But now, of course, things have changed in Australia. We've got a Labour government in Australia. The previous ambassador, Joe Hockey, I think was quite a good friend of yours. You got, you got on pretty well with him. Now they've appointed Kevin Rudd, former Labour MP. I mean, he has said the most horrible things. You're a destruct, you were a destructive president, a traitor to the West. And he's now Australia's ambassador in Washington. Yeah, well, I don't know. Would you take, would you take a phone call he from won't, him? He won't be there long if that's the case. I don't know much about him. Uh, I heard he was a little bit nasty. Uh, I hear he's not the brightest bulb. But I don't know much about him. But if uh, if he's at all hostile, he will not be there long. I actually feel sorry a little bit for Penny Wong this week. She had to defend Rudd. Does this show that it was a mistake or at least very risky for the government to appoint uh, Kevin Rudd as ambassador, given his comments were well known and Donald Trump had already declared his candidacy at the time? And secondly, uh, will the government keep uh, Kevin Rudd as ambassador if Donald Trump returns to the White House? Uh, uh, in relation to the latter, the answer is yes. In relation to the former, what I'd say is this. Even Mr Dutton uh, has expressed confidence uh, in Mr Rudd. Uh, Mr Rudd is a very effective ambassador. He is recognised uh, as doing, across this parliament, as doing, parliament is doing an excellent job in advancing Australia's interests in the United States. And I'd point you in particular to the phenomenal amount of work which has been done uh, on AUKUS in the period that he's been ambassador. Uh, he's been extremely active uh, in engaging with members of Congress on both sides of politics. Uh, and uh, he is you know, a former prime minister, a former foreign minister. Uh, his experience and skills mean he will be able to work closely with whomever is elected by the Australian, by the American people as the United States president. No, I'm not buying it. It won't be possible for Australia to have an ambassador that has so publicly bad-mouthed the president. Rudd's future in that job, no matter how experienced he might be, is tied very much to the success of Joe Biden, or whoever the Democrat candidate is, on November 5. I don't believe those conspiracy theories that Google and YouTube are suppressing right-wing content. I think they're fair to everybody. Let's prove that right. 
get onto that subscription button down there and press it and get the bell pressed and watch the full episodes here. Have a look at pressing that button too. I mean, there's so many buttons to press to subscribe. Just subscribe.